Hey everybody, it's Katie. If you are a mom who is breastfeeding, it's likely that you have heard about mastitis and or a clogged milk duct. Today I want to talk about some of the possible causes, what it looks like if you get it, and then potentially how to deal with it at home if you do end up with one of those things. With my first daughter, I never dealt with mastitis or a clogged duct, and, I, and I, I'm not sure why, because we certainly had our ups and downs with our nursing relationship, and it certainly, I mean, I certainly had pain and problems with her, you know, thinking, oh, I'm going to turn my nose up, and me having, you know, really full breasts, so I'm not quite sure why we didn't have it happen, but it didn't for whatever reason. But with my second daughter, I noticed one day as I was nursing and she was pounding her little tiny baby fists on me and poking and prodding that there was a, a lump in my breast and it was tender. Now I thought, what is happening? Fortunately, being my second baby, I didn't immediately panic and think I had like, you know, breast cancer. But I, I did think, okay, this probably has something to do with nursing. Don't freak out. So I, I got online and I started looking and the very first thing that popped up was, you probably have a clogged milk duct. And so I started looking around a little bit more about what can I do about this. And fortunately, I was able to deal with it at home. I didn't ever even need to call my doctor. Um, fortunately, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to self-diagnose, I think, just based on what you can find out there online. And then also, if you catch it, you can typically deal with it yourself. It's important to note that there is a there is a difference, and I didn't actually know this, there is a difference between having a clogged milk duct and having mastitis. So typically the first thing you get is a clogged milk duct. If you don't get that cleared up, or if for whatever reason you don't notice it or you don't deal with it, then it will lead to mastitis. And mastitis is technically speaking an inflammation of the breast, and it's because of a clogged duct. Now, if you don't treat it, worst case scenario is you can actually get an infection and you need antibiotics and there's it actually could get worse than that but I think you'd have to be like brain dead to not know that there's something happening I need to fix because it it definitely displays you can see it you can feel it so anyway but there is a distinction between the two so it's important to kind of the treatment is similar, but it's important to not panic and think, oh, I have mastitis, when it might be just that you have a clogged duct and you can deal with it at home without much fanfare. Some of the more traditional symptoms of having a clogged duct are going to be pain. That's typically your first indication that there's something wrong. For me, as I mentioned, there was a little, like a lump. It was just kind of a little hard nodule on the top of my breast, and I was thinking, okay, that hurts a little bit. And I was, I was feeling run down that day. Of course, it's hard because typically when this is happening, you also have a newer baby and so you're already tired. So it's like, am I tired because my kid slept for 45 minutes last night or am I tired because, you know, am I fatigued? But if you add up all the symptoms with breast pain and um, sometimes there's a red rash around the area, it's not like super rashy, but with mine, there it was right here and there was um, kind of redness around it and it felt warm to the touch. It was painful. Um, I don't think I ever got a fever, but that's another symptom. So you can definitely tell that there's something not right. And especially, you know, a really good indicator is the pain in the breast and then the, it feels thick or there might be like a lump feeling and it's, you know, it's not a huge lump, it's like a little nodule and it, that's the duct saying, help me. <laughs> now you might be wondering, well, why did I get a clogged milk duct? My baby's nursing, like what's happening? How did this happen? Typically, um, from at least with me, when I got it, what we were dealing with was my daughter was nursing. Her latch was mostly okay. I think that might have been part of it. But the other part of it is she was not fully emptying my breast. And so if you think of the ducts as, you know, kind of like flower petals, um, each one being emptied, 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 but she would stop about halfway through or, you know, three quarters of the way through and fall off in a milk drunk coma. And meanwhile, there's still milk in there and and it wasn't being emptied fully and I didn't know I mean I did I guess I was just kind of ignoring the fact that I needed to deal with that and she would fall asleep and then I wouldn't nurse or I would go to the other side and so I, I think that for, from everything that I've seen and from my own personal experience it's typically because the breast is not being emptied fully there's also latch concerns that might be part of it is that latch isn't good um, so 
if your if your baby does what my baby was doing, um, it might be a good idea, especially in those early times, to maybe hand express a little bit or pump a little bit. Now you have to be careful, obviously, because you're also trying to not tell your brain that you need a, a bunch more milk. So there's a fine line. Um, but do pay attention that if your breast is not being fully emptied, kind of keep an eye on that because that's one of the big reasons why you get a clogged milk duct. Okay, so suggestions. I have a clogged milk duct, or I think I do, or I think I have mastitis. What do I do? Okay, well, the very first thing that I read in big, bold letters, it was on some hippie website, it was like, don't stop nursing even if it hurts. So I, I didn't, and I nursed um, through. I let her nurse on both sides, but I was careful to let her nurse on the side where I had it. And I, as she was nursing, I would gently, gently, because it hurt, I would gently massage that nodule just to kind of help break it up a little bit. Um, I also, the next thing that I did is, I, when I talked to my mom, she said, try this, you know, stand in the shower, with warm water, again, careful, because that causes letdown, but I didn't care at that point because I was in pain. <laughs> um, so stand in the shower with warm water and gently massage that area and just kind of do that as frequently as you can. You can also, if you don't want to get in the shower, you can take a warm, wet compress, borderline on hot, you know, you don't want to burn yourself, but get it warm, you know, put it on your breast and then massage that area um, because the heat is going to help release. Another really big part of this is rest. Um, this also could be your body kind of telling you like, hey, slow down a little bit, pay attention, make sure you're emptying your breasts, just chill a little bit, like take it easy. So sleep, because I mean, that probably won't be too hard because if you have a clogged duct or mastitis, you probably feel like junk anyway. So take those cues from your body, sleep a little bit, sleep as much as you can, sleep with baby, just let them kind of nurse, nurse on demand, let them nurse as much as possible. Now, there's a few other things that I want to mention, and I am not a doctor, <laughs> so I encourage you to do your own research and do what feels right for you, but the next few suggestions I'm going to give you are things that I have seen from moms groups and from women that I trust who have gone through nursing situations and women who have five and six kids and have been nursing for 14 years, whoa. So again, not a professional, do your research, but here are some other ideas, some alternative ideas um, that you could add to the ones we just talked about. Okay, so again, here are some of the more, some of my friends call me the, the hippie, but here are some of the more hippie suggestions, I guess you could say. Uh, lethicin, which you can buy at most health food stores. You can do apple cider vinegar. You can put a little bit of that in your water and drink it throughout the day. You can use ionic silver. You can chop up garlic and eat that or swallow it. You can chop it up so you can swallow it as much as, as small as you can. <laughs> um, you can also do cabbage leaves. Now, actually, I saw a, um, an article on this and I didn't read it, but it was through a respected website and it said can cabbage leaves cure mastitis so there is something to that so I would look into cabbage leaves as well sounds really weird I know but you do the cabbage leaves and you put it on the area but but also do research on that because cabbage leaves can also do other things to your milk supply so it doesn't come without you know the possibility of it affecting something else so those are a few of the more hippie suggestions, but this is mostly just to encourage you that if this happens to you or you're at home and you've got a lump and you're in pain and you're thinking, what do I do? Take heart. Do some, do some research and try working on it at home um, before, you, before you panic and make any phone calls. I would like to strongly encourage you that if this goes on for days and days, if you get a rash on your breast that is moving up towards your armpits, if you have a fever for more than a few days or more than a day or two, I would probably at that point contact whatever professional that's, that's in your area or whoever you're working with because at some point, um, if it becomes an infection, you do need to take care of it um, and you don't, you know, but you can, you can work on it at home before it gets to that point. Guys, we have a Facebook page. If you haven't checked us out there, I would love to invite you to join us. We post daily content there, so we'd love to have you join us in that area as well. If you liked our video, give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody that it would be helpful for, I'd be honored if you'd consider sharing it with them. Uh, if you'd like to be a subscriber, you can click on the little bell icon and join along with us on our journey. And that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully we will see you for our next video. Bye.